What's up, people? Uh, welcome back to the MCPC show, the most excited show in the whole wide world. And we are right here at Afro Vibes Radio Houston, the best radio station in the whole wide world. All right, like I said before, you can listen to us anytime, anywhere, in your bedroom, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the classroom, in the other room. Go ahead and just download that app right now on your Android phone, on your iOS, and listen to the best radio, uh, you know, in the whole wide world. All right, so this week we promise you, uh, like I like I promised you last week, uh, to to feature one of the best of the best. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to hear a voice that will change your life, that will change your career. All right, uh, we're gonna pay uh, some bills. Don't go anywhere. After the short break, I will unveil. My special guest of the week. All right, stay right there. My name is MCPC. I'll be right back. Your favorite radio station. This is AfroVibes Radio Houston. All right, welcome back. You're still on to the MCPC show right here on AfroVibes Radio. We broke us. You know, in Houston, and uh, we have coverage in all all over the world, more than 120 countries in the world. Uh, but on today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the first female guest on this show. She was born in Nigeria, Nigeria to the world. She 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 was brought up in London, England, and in it, you know, in it, in your book, in it. <laughs> She was brought up and uh, she studied in England and uh, she moved out to America a couple of years ago. Uh, she lived in LA before, now she lives in Houston. She is a singer and a songwriter. Uh, she started singing right from her mother's womb. <laughs> We're going to find out how she made that possible. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome the amazing, the talented, the beautiful, the gorgeous. A blessed child oh, wow. of one father somewhere in Africa. Yes. Please a round of applause for my oh, wow. oh my god. <laughs> like that's like the best introduction slash funniest introduction. Your husband will pay me for this introduction he when he comes. To. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> my oh, wow. Good to have you in the, in the studio with I'm us. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you, thank you. You're Shout welcome. out to Apple Vibes. Yes. Shout out to MC. Yes. You see. In it. Need it. In it. Yeah, in it. <laughs> Your daughter is from England. Yeah. Okay. You can't even believe the day England will play. I don't want to play. I'm like, I have to support England. I hey, hey, wish England. So, Dad, I was born in England. I'm like, hey, she has I pay the B. Whoever you are supporting, say, no, Dad, I can well, support whoever I want to support. I you know, so it's good. So, how have you been? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, I've been in a good place. Right. Lately, so right. 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 Good to have so you in the happy. studio. Thank you. All right. So, my your 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 yours, yours is M Y O A. That's I, the hope, stage name, I hope that I hope that is happy with that name because you're about that don't joke with the real. I know. Want, yeah, Mayo. He, he's fine because he knows I took it from my real name. Okay. M A Y O W A. So. Right. He sometimes he'll text me and he'll put M Y O A if he's trying to be in the artist mode. Right. So he gets it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Does it call? Does he, does he actually? He actually test it out. That yeah. Sometimes he'll text that M Y O A. That that is trying to be yeah, like, like we want to belong. Yeah. I don't want to belong. It feels to be old. <laughs> Alright, Smaya, so tell us. Uh, I'm sure my wonderful listeners will want to find out um, who your journey so far as a young woman, you know, born in Nigeria, uh, lived in England and studied in England, and uh, now you live in America. Can you take us through in a, in, in brief sentences uh, on how this whole thing started? Uh, tell us about well, who you first are. First of all, God dropped me from heaven. No, kidding. So, my <laughs> name is Maiwa. Um, I'm definitely, I'm Nigerian. I was born in Nigeria, I grew up in England. Uh, now in the States, like you said, mm -hmm. um, apart from being a singer-songwriter, you know, I am uh, the first child mm. of uh, three beautiful children. So you receive all the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> well... I heard of all the younger ones. Uh, the, the discipline I was, was more the, I was, Yeah, I guess I was like the first... Uh, right. Is it the ship or what they call yeah, them? Like, yeah, yeah, you receive all the initial, initial <laughs> discipline. <laughs> like, and then they have to like, okay, she, she's gone through this, and right. we know what to do, what not to do. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's it, really. Um, and uh, obviously, like you said, I'm a singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it just didn't start like that. I mean, I've been singing since I was young, but right. you know, I, I went to school. When I say school, like I went through formal education. Right. Uh, 
in finance, accounting and finance. And oh, I, nice. did, I did study, also, I also have an associate degree in music, by the okay. way. But uh, that was like my first thing. Finance. But your yeah. first degree was is it finance? Yeah. So we have a lot in common. Yeah, we first do degree. have a lot in common. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah. did that. I can't. What I'm stingy. It was not stingy. I don't spend. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I think stingy. we know how to handle it because yeah. I have my masters in business. So I'm like, I really do use all of that in my in my music. Like, how to, to manage your your budget. Yeah, you, know? you have to. Yeah. Because you know how this thing yeah. works. Like, it's not that easy. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's it really. And then what, what are you, what's your, uh, your your first name is Mayowa. Yes, Olua Mayowa. Olua Mayowa. What does that mean? God brings joy. Hey, God. Okay, man. God, bring, <laughs> God has brought joy to Afro vibes today, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. So. Okay, and your last name? Shoba Mowo. Shoba. Say, they say like a Yoruba girl. That's how, that's how I'm saying it. There's a silent H there. Okay. Shoba Mowo. You sure if that yeah, that that's gonna be that's gonna be how people do you pronounce it? It'll be alright. You sure? Uh, no, that would be alright. It would be alright. Don't juice American. I'm not juicing it up. That's the best. Don't use say, American though. slash English as a Show ba more walk. And what does that can mean? Can you repeat? Can you even say uh, say? Say it again. Uh huh. See. Say it again. Say it again. Show ba more walk. Show ba more walk. Ah, kill the ah more ah. More. You know you have to do ah kill <laughs> ah math ah. Ah, hey, ah, my, hey, that's what you need to do, Yoruba. Yoruba, Yoruba language, you don't have to know. All you need to do is just have the swap. Ah, 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 uh, <laughs> what is the meaning of uh, uh, that? Don't ask me. That. I don't know what that last name means. Please. <laughs> okay, now put Let you. me call my dad. Yeah, can somebody help my what? What Please, is the meaning? If anyone knows what my last name, uh, my correct last name means, let me know. Because it's going to change. Right. Yeah, yeah the venture bomb. You need to know what that. But I, I really need to know. I mean, right. it's not very common. But I, I reckon it's like. I mean, I come from a royal family. Both awesome. my parents come from royal blood. So okay. I reckon it has something to do with that. Okay, so born in Nigeria. Uh, what age did you live for England? Uh, officially, I mean, what is official? Probably around 13 oh, or even, it was before that, but I, I would just say officially, like, possibly like So you're probably just going and coming yeah, back then like before you guys were yeah. located. So your yeah. secondary school, like we call it, uh, part of your primary school was yes. in Nigeria then. Majority yeah, of your. I'm trying to calculate my age. Like, yeah, no, I'm fine. I don't worry, man. I'm an accountant like you, so we know we're very good with figures. Before you I'm leave like, now, oh, before you leave, before you leave the studio, I will basically, tell you all years you age. Basically. And all of the age will give basically, you. Basically, I'm here now. It's I'll give you a thousand dollars for every of your years. How about that? You see, Can we talk about this off the air. No. <laughs> 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 All right. Matters now is that I'm here. I know. Okay, so you moved to England and uh, your first degree in accounting. Well, at what point did you realize that you know this is music is what you want to do? Do you know what? I think it first happened when I was nine, because mm. uh, this was when I was still in Nigeria. My music teacher, who's no longer with us, he's mm. passed away. May he so rest in peace. I'm sorry. Um, he was already like I was already taking piano lessons and writing and one day I had written a song and I was like I really think this song is something so I went to meet him secretly and I was like I have a song but I'm so shy and he was like let me hear it so he heard it and he was like this is great I need to right. teach it to the school assembly it was from that moment when he believed in me of course my parents did too but when he did and he heard my song and he played it and people didn't even know it was me oh, and wow. at the end he was like oh they wrote so they sang the screen in your school and they yeah, sang the song they in your sang school? it and Ooh. I was like whoa so what a feeling. from that minute I knew this is what I wanted to do so you already became a star you know, while you were in school. I don't know that, yeah. but yeah, I guess kind of. so, something, yeah. But I mean, I, I had to go through normal education and even when I was in England, you know, still doing everything I had to do, it had been on the back of my mind. And I remember in 2007, I was like, I had a good job, right. you know, everything. I was like, I really want to explore like this music thing, take it to the next level. So. Right. I pray though, you know how we do. We yeah, pray. you have to, you know, you can't do without God in you Africa. Can't. Yeah. <laughs> the you Lord can't. have to yeah. lead you. If you lead to yourself, be. you're on your own. <laughs> That's what happened. You basically. can't leave yourself. And I told my parents, and they're like, "Okay, no worries." I said, like, "I'm going to America." On oh, your own? Mm -hmm. On my own. Quit my job, right. three thousand miles, and it was when I made that decision I knew it was serious. Right. So when you where you you she landed where? Like, which states? I went straight city? to Los Angeles. So I was there like end of 2007, mm -hmm. like October. Went straight to school. So I actually went to study uh, vocal performances. Um, a vocal performance and production. Oh wow. So I got an associate degree and I went to Hollywood, packed my bags. I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. You know. Where you can be it, where you can be popular. It was popular. Or, or it was smelling popular. popular. Yeah. Well, Hollywood smells like I don't know why. Serious. I had tasers, I have pepper spray, like <laughs> I'll be there taking like looking like nice picture and at the end of the day I'm like, 
scared yeah. a little bit. Only was like that. And whenever I go there, I'm like, what is it? Like, what is there? That, uh, but the volume of money in that place. Ooh, yes, but but brother, it's with the money, I will stay there. Yeah. I don't care how smelly, how old the house is. Because, I mean, like the houses we yeah. have in Houston, they're very cute and nice. Yeah, yeah. Houston is still pretty nice and cute. But mm -hmm. over there, Oh yeah, it's expensive too. Like Mexico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's got like potential. A lot of, potential. lot of potential. And that's really where it started, you know. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. All right. So I. Uh, so you. 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 Your first degree was in finance. Yes. You worked as a financial person, I guess. Yes, I did. Yeah. Then you realized that hey, this is what I want to do. I want to go into music, mm -hmm. and you took the time. I did. To educate yourself in a field that you're interested in. Yeah. All right. So. Does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean that if you had not had a formal or another semi-formal education in music, you would not be as good as you are today? Hmm. What impact did that? Oh, that's a great yeah, question. What impact did that make? Did that make in your in so, music career today? I think it goes two ways. Mm -hmm. First of all, I like to learn. I'm one of those. I think maybe because you know Nigerian parents like learn learn right. accounting, but I wanted to learn like. The things behind it like what makes you a band leader you know what mm -hmm. how do you learn beat production you can learn on your own but i'm like one of those that i just want to see a little further so it was because of that it doesn't mean i would not be better but to be honest being going to school mm -hmm. has made me more structured made me believe that there is a way out there and, and it doesn't mean that if i didn't go i would not be better but right. I, for me personally i know going there because i had to train myself get in front of audiences right. I, if i'd done it on my own i would have been yeah, scared can I, can I you imagine? know i had to learn how to read music play the uh, guitar you know better uh you have to learn how to so sing to key things to key not just yeah. singing anyhow there, the, there. Exactly. The, the keyboardist have to find your key to <laughs> and we, uh, just yeah, keep like, singing ah, just keep singing we'll find we'll it find <laughs> we'll find it just keep going <laughs> And that is so know, true. You know, I, oh I'm not finding my dad keep singing. That is too funny. I'm tired yeah. of singing. I have not found the padlock. Oh I mean, my God, the key. The key. <laughs> okay. that, but you, you know what? That's the truth. I think for me, formal education in music right. really gave me the the needed push that I needed. You know, that attitude to be able to go for it and learn other things that I would not have done on my own. So right, right. I learned so much in school, man. Awesome. All right. So, uh, distinguished uh, listener out there in the world, if you are just tuning in. You are on to the MCPC show and I have a special guest born in Nigeria, started raising uh, in the UK and now live in America. It's just, uh, she's a singer and a songwriter. Uh, she's very beautiful if you can see it. Those of us that can watch on TV. Uh, don't go anywhere. We have a lot to learn from this young woman because she's making Africa, Nigeria proud even at this during the World Cup. I understand she's supposed to be in Russia right now to sing one of the songs but she, anything can still happen before the end yes, of the World anything Cup. can happen. All right, we're going to take a, a quick break, a music break. We're going to listen to one of our song, and this one is titled Olu Ololufemi. Ololufemi. Can you tell me a little what is that song all yeah, about? Ololufemi the means my love. It's basically it was just like I like to write a story. So mm -hmm. just like you know, somebody you meet someone unexpectedly, maybe right. at a place, and then you just realize that they are your love, and it's like it's kind of like a, a, a prayer of love, saying that you know you want this person to be your life forever, and mm -hmm. you're just. Expressing your love. So was that particular song directed to somebody or to uh, God? No, or? it wasn't to. It wasn't to God. It wasn't to anybody. It, so anybody it, can it, just with, take it. Anyone can take it. Anyone can relate to it. I mean, so I can take it now. You can take it. Okay. <laughs> I'm it. You know, like but it's like an expression of love. That's really what that song meant for me. I wanted to see what love meant. And okay. Expressed it through. All right. So listen to this song uh, titled "Olo Lufemi" by Mayowa. We'll be right back after this short. Me. This is Afro Vibes Radio Houston. Welcome back to the MCPC show right here on Afro Vibes Radio. We are broadcasting live from Houston and you can listen to us from anywhere in the world. Just go ahead and tell your friends about this radio station. Download the app on your Android or your, or your iOS. Okay, listener, uh, if you're still with me, I still have here in the studio the talented, the beautiful, the gorgeous Mayowa. All right, so Mayowa, you moved to LA. You studied in LA. Uh, you found out, okay, this is what you want to do. Um, how how did LA receive your kind of music? By the way, how did you, how do I how do I describe your kind of music? Um, I call it like soul pop jazz. Uh, soul pop a, jazz. Yes, yeah, soul pop jazz. Like hey. my if you like to check out my mixture. Instagram hashtag yeah. soulful jazz um, yeah it's soul pop jazz so it's like a mixture of soulful music that comes from the soul it's pop because you know it has the element of fun to right. it and, and then jazz just because I love jazz and it's different and I think uh, they received it well to be honest like everywhere I've gone is people say your music is different but um, 
they I think I really sing from a personal place but still universal right and because I love to perform people see the story of my song through my performance and mm -hmm. then they're able to just get it going so that's what it is and it's been wonderful and everyone's been accepting it and I'm just I'm thankful. All right, well, I think what you should do is as a Yoruba get traditionally, you should do <laughs> soap up ja fuji, which is fuji. Add a little bit of fuji to it. Ah, and I that, know right. That would be a combo, yeah. right? Soap up ja, ja fuji. Oh lord, and put some gen 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 into it. He's exactly, he's exactly. So you so you can represent <laughs> your your, your tribe. Anyway, so um. So early, early quite received your music very well. At what point did you decide to come to Houston? Uh, and why well, you first to of come all, to when I graduated from school, um, I already had a band going. I performed at the school graduation. I thought, mm -hmm. okay, this is great. But then I, I felt like LA was getting saturated, so I, was right. like, I need to go somewhere else. So um, ended up going to Vegas. Had some opportunities there. Played the House of Blues, Strong Hotel, and a few other venues. Hard Rock. Um, so I was in Vegas for like I think a year and a half. And then I was like, okay, this is fun. I'm doing covers, but I really want to start creating a market. And then there was an opportunity to come out here in Houston, mm -hmm. uh, also because of a job. Because by then I was like, I need to pay my bills. So <laughs> this music is not, it's not bringing me plenty money right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was still doing music, and then right. Houston became that. And I was like, wow, this this is. And everyone was like, oh, you can't really make in Houston. It's going to be right. different. You're different. Like you're, you're kind of female, and then you're yeah. like, you know that. First of all, think automatically I'm R&B, but I'm not. You right. know? And so because of that, I just created my niche here, and it's been wonderful. I met people that like you. Thank you know, Jesus. it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Okay, so you mentioned, you made mention of you being female. Yes. And, and, as, and as a musician, mm -hmm. what has there been any kind of challenges you face as a female musician in the African community? In the African community, um, I think naturally, um, even if you look back home in Nigeria, uh, there are more male um, artists there and I don't know what it is it's not that females are not as good right we are great we're just as great um, I think it's just a little bit more challenging because maybe they just think they're set in way a woman should act or sing mm -hmm. and so there's not really out there so for me personally I've not really had bad challenges I've had situations maybe when there's a you know, if, if the, you have to have a show, maybe there's like five guys right. before they even consider like, oh yeah, we want a female. So right. that's probably one of the you, things you, that you, you, face, you're you know? not You're not far from the truth. Cause I remember yeah. the last time I produced the Mother's Day comedy show. Oh, yeah. A Mother's Day comedy yeah. show, I did not have a female yeah. on my lineup. Oh, yeah. So it was like a couple of weeks before the show, I'm like, let me see so what's wrong with you. Yeah. You're doing a Mother's Day show and no on a Mother's Day yeah. for mothers and others. And there's no female. And there's no female. Is. So I have to like, you know, real yeah. quick call it a female mm -hmm. to be on it. That does not mean that, you know, uh, female artists have been looked down upon, but I, I don't know what, what I don't, I'm not sure what it is. That? I think personally, um it's just like in most things, to be mm. honest, not just with music or comedy. There's a lot of things that men usually tend to do because it started with the tradition of right. man has to provide. But mm -hmm. I think that's what started it. But now, you know, the modern world, like women are doing things just as much. But right. maybe, maybe, maybe it's the case that there were already men in the market before. So now it's just a case of the women trying to come through and break through. Like, you know, we can do just as great. So, right. Um, a lot of women are doing their things too now, so I, I'm happy about that. All right, so for the young, for the young ones that are coming up, young yes. female uh, artists, either comedians or yeah. actresses or musicians, or, or, what, what advice would you have to give to them, you know, just to, to be able to break you out? You have to, to do it. You have to start somewhere. I know people get scared. Oh, I don't know. Am I good? And, and I usually tell people, don't ask your family first. Your family, if they love you, they'll say you're good. And you might not be that good in that certain area, but don't. Same thing with comedy. All right? right? As a comedian, yeah. you write jokes, yeah. don't ask your friends what? or ask your, your sister. I mean, you can ask them they will say, they'll say no, 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 your family. They say, oh, it's funny, it's funny. And you go and to the you stage, oh, God. <laughs> If I ask your enemies, enemies who don't like you, say my brother, how far is I it? I think be real, reach out to people <laughs> and then figure out what it is that you like to do. And you, for instance, if you like doing music and you're like, oh, I don't know how to sing, well, then maybe you know how to write. Right. Or maybe you like beats and you can produce. So I think start from somewhere, find people that you emulate and don't give up. It's going to be hard, but you have to try it. You have to do it. Yeah. Okay, so how do you get yourself motivated? motivated? Uh, to me, I get motivated through life. When, to be honest, I know it's going to sound really cliche, but when I'm going through like the the, the, the darkest moment, when I say dark, now like, you know, right. I'm about to, you know, like just like moments where I'm thinking, I'm trying to analyze, those things motivate me. And I'm, you know, I come from a home where I grew up with God, so I I, I, I like to pray. And I'm, I used to be very close that where I wouldn't talk about certain things, but now I've realized I have very few close people in my life. So 
I speak to them about things that I'm going through and when I get their answers or situations, those things like motivate me to keep going. And when I see little step, little bits of success, that motivates you because you're like, oh, okay, I'm getting that, I can keep right. going. Okay. So, and so, I know what the end goal is. I see the end goal, so right. I have to just keep going. And that's kind of what so that means. Your I goal, see the end goal. So your, your goal that you set ahead of you kind of motivates you yes. to achieve it. Which, which, is, it which is good, yeah. which is good. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question right now. Uh, yeah. Since you're in the music industry, Yeah. Between Tupac and Biggie, what do you Gosh, think? Probably. What do you think was oh, a bigger legend that, to you? But that's not even a hard question for me because I grew up listening to Tupac. Okay. I like Tupac. So it's not that one was better than the other, right. it's just that I felt more connected. Yeah, the one you feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. Yeah, okay. I mean, they hear some cool songs, but I really connected to Tupac. <laughs> All right, first time on I stage. I think you're going to ask me like Sonia and then. Nah, you, you, I mean, you. <laughs> You know some yeah. Do you of do you know Obey? My, yeah, yeah, my you're at the age of nine. Parents, <laughs> our parents, I, I think we had an Obey record. Oh, you have to. And every Nigerian home, most Nigerians home, Nigerian home. Nigerian yeah. just from the Yoruba, you have to have Obey exactly. and the Beniza. Just from the Igbo side, you have to have a, a what do you call it, Osita Sadebe and all of that. You know, and someone like me from the Niger Delta area, we have you know Jupiter Y4 and the rest. So, um, and I actually grew up in uh, country music. I don't know how my woman did. You told yeah. me that. I told you. Yeah, yeah, I grew up yeah. in country music. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's amazing. Uh, in yeah, my dad. I don't know. That's grew great. up in the uh, country music and uh, uh, camera and uh, calypso Ooh. and my cousin. My dad seems to like my cousin and calypso, but mostly uh, country music. The cool living, you know, African parents when they're back. I from, think country music is like very relax. soulful. Yeah. Music. So and the cool living when it's relaxing, you know, when he's drinking his fine wine. Oh, <laughs> then, <okay. laughs> That's what you can ask for anything. Yeah, because you, know, yeah, you have to be very calculative if yeah. you have to ask your, your African father for something. Yeah. Among all of us in the house, yeah. I'm the one who know the trick. My younger <laughs> brother will always go and ask my dad when he's just coming back from somewhere. That's the wrong time to ask him. Or you ask him when he's about to eat. Don't. Let him finish that food. Don't. Yeah. But for me, I will wait. They will come and ask when he's just coming in. Yeah. No, no, we'll talk about it later. Can I catch you some? Just come, come back in. Huh? Huh? Do you have respect? Then when he's um, eating, yeah. me and my younger one go to dad, can't you see I'm eating? I'm eating Let me yeah. finish eating. But for me, I will just wait for him to finish eating. Yeah. As soon as I saw since my dad do something like this. Like relax and yes. relax and uh, he put his toothpick in his ah. mouth. I said, yes, you don't enter. <laughs> I will just say, dad, I found out. <laughs> say you, you. I think that works with you. women to men too. Right. That's a, uh, uh, you want to ask for money? No, no, it doesn't have to be money. <laughs> you, just, you have to know when to like. Get you know, it right. Exactly. Know. So, I mean, timing is right. Yeah, time, timing is right. Timing is very right. right. All right. What was your first time on a professional stage and how, how was it? How was your experience? Ooh. Like, I've had, to be honest, I had my first time on a professional stage was in a choir group setting that okay. was in Nigeria. I was really young there. We had a choir thing. But for me personally, mm -hmm. would be in Los Angeles during our graduation. Um, I performed at theater at the graduation it had like 1500 people stanley clark was there and it was amazing and you know i was with my band there in la and that was like my first i would say proper like me my right. myoa doing her thing yeah right and how was it it was amazing yeah because you know you, yeah. i was remember, doing original remember when i when i played your song in the assembly graduate school oh so <laughs> you're wow, but it's, it's taking a while because before that big stage i've been doing small little cafes in los angeles but that was like a big first professional, professional one Stage with uh, lights, I'm not sure stage, you people. I'm not sure you Apparently, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's a break. Your favorite radio station. This is Afrovibes Radio Houston. All right, so, um, uh, distinguished uh, listener out there in the world, if you are just tuning in, you are on to the MCPC show, and I have a special guest, born in Nigeria. Started raising in, uh, in the UK and now live in America. It's just, uh, she's a singer and a songwriter. Uh, she's very beautiful if you can see. Those of us that can watch on TV, uh, don't go anywhere. We have a lot to learn from this young woman because she's making Africa, Nigeria proud, even at this during the World Cup. I understand she's supposed to be in Russia right now to sing one of the songs, but. She, anything can happen before the end yes, of the World anything Cup. Can happen. All right, we're going to take a, a quick break, a music break. We're going to listen to one of our songs. Uh, this one is titled Olu 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 Femi. Can you tell me a little what, what is that song all yeah, about? Olu Femi means my love. It's basically it was just like I like to write a story. So mm -hmm. just like you know, somebody you meet someone unexpectedly, maybe right. at a place, and then you just realize that they are your love. And it's like it's kind of like a, a, a prayer of love, saying that you know you want this person to be your life forever, and Good. you're just 
expressing your love. So was that particular love. song directed to somebody or uh, to God? No, or? it wasn't to it wasn't to God, it wasn't to anybody. It, so anybody it, can it just take it. Anyone can take it, anyone can relate to it. I mean So I can take it now. You can take it. Okay. <laughs> you know, we'll but it's like an expression of love. That's really what that song meant for me. I wanted to see what love meant. Okay. Expressed it through. Alright, so listen to this song uh titled Olo Lufemi by Mayowa. We'll be right back after this short music break. Stay right there. This is Afro Vibes Radio Houston. Welcome back to the MCPC show right here on Afro Vibes Radio. We are broadcasting live from Houston and you can listen to us from anywhere in the world. Just go ahead and tell your friends about this radio station. Download the app on your Android or your, or your iOS. Okay, listener, uh, if you're still with me, I still have here in the studio the talented, the beautiful, the gorgeous Mayowa. Alright, so Mayowa, you moved to LA, you studied in LA, uh, you found out, okay, this is what you want to do. Um, how, how did LA receive your kind of music? By the way, how did you... Uh, how do I how do I describe your kind of music? Um, I call it like soul pop jazz. Uh, soul pop it, jazz. Yeah, soul pop jazz. It's like hey. my if you like to check out my mixture. Instagram hashtag yeah. soul pop jazz. <laughs> um, yeah, it's soul pop jazz. So it's like a mixture of soulful music that comes from mm -hmm. the soul. It's pop because you know it has the element of fun to right. it, and and then jazz just because I love jazz and it's different. And I think uh, they received it well. To be honest, like everywhere I've gone, it's, people say your music is different, but. Um, they, I think I really sing from a personal place, but still universal. Right. And because I love to perform, people see the story of my song through my performance, and mm -hmm. then they're able to just get it going. So that's what it is, and it's been wonderful, and everyone's been accepting it, and I just, I'm thankful. All right. Well, I think what you should do is, as a, as a Yoruba get traditionally, you should do so-called <laughs> ja food, which is Fuji. Add a little bit of Fuji to it. Ah, and I know, right? That'll be a combo, right? right? So-called so ja food. Oh lord. And put some gang 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 into it. He exactly, did. exactly. So you so you can represent your <laughs> your, your tribe. Anyway, so um, so early early quite received your music very well. At what point did you decide to come to Houston? Uh, and why well, did you first to of all, when I graduated from school, um, I already had a band going. I performed at like, the school graduation. I thought, mm -hmm. okay, this is great. But then I, I felt like LA was getting saturated, so I was right. like, I need to go somewhere else. So um, ended up going to Vegas. Had some opportunities there. Played the House of Blues, strong hotels and a few other venues hard rock um so i was in vegas for like i think a year and a half and then i was like okay this is fun i'm doing covers but i really want to start creating a market and then there was an opportunity to come out here in houston mm -hmm. uh just also because of a job because by then i was like i need to pay my bills so I <laughs> this music is not it's <laughs> not being money right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i was still doing music and then right. houston became that and i was like wow this this is and everyone was like oh you can't really make it houston it's going to be right. different you're different like you're, you're kind of female and then you're yeah. like you know they, first of all think automatically i'm r&b but i'm not you right know? and so because of that i just created my niche here and it's been wonderful i met people like you Thank you, you know, Jesus. it's been wonderful yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so you mentioned you made mention of you being female yes and, and, as, and as a musician mm -hmm. what has there been any kind of challenges you face as a female musician in the African community? In the African community, um, I think naturally, um, even if you look back home in Nigeria, uh, there are more male um, artists there. And I don't know what it is, not that females are not as good. Right. We are great, we're just as great. Um, I think it's just a little bit more challenging because maybe they just think they're set in way a woman should act or sing. Mm -hmm. And so there's not really out there. So for me personally, I've not really had bad challenges. I've had situations maybe when there's a, you know, if, if the, you have to have a show, maybe there's like five guys right. before they even consider like, oh, yeah, we want a female. So right. that's probably one of the things yeah, that yeah, you yeah, face, you're you know? not You're not far from the truth. Because I remember yeah. the last time I produced the Mother's Day comedy show. Oh, yeah. A Mother's Day comedy yeah. show, I did not have a female was, on my lineup. Oh, my so it was like a couple of weeks before the show, I'm like, what's let me see, so what's wrong with you? Yeah. You're doing a Mother's Day show no on a Mother's Day yeah. for mothers and others. And there's no female. And there's no the female. Kids. So I have to like, you know, real yeah. quick call the female to be on it. That does not mean that, you know, uh, female artists have been looked down upon, but I, I don't know what, what I don't, you I'm not sure what it is. That? I think personally, um, it's just like 
in most things to be mm-hmm. honest not just with music or comedy there's a lot of things that men usually tend to do because it started with the tradition of right. the man has to provide first mm-hmm. i think that's what started it but now you know the modern world like women are doing things just as much but right. maybe 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 it's the case that there were already men in the market before so now it's just a case of the women trying to come through and break through like you know we can do just as great so right. um a lot of women are doing their things too now, so I, I'm happy about that. All right, so for the young, for the young ones that are coming up, young yes. female uh, artists, either comedians or yeah. actresses or musicians, or what, what advice would you have to give to them? You know, just to to be able to break you out. Have to, to do it. You have to start somewhere. I know people get scared. Oh, I don't know. Am I good? And, and I usually tell people, don't ask your family first. Because your family, if they love you, they'll say you're good. And you might not be that good in that certain area. But don't. Same thing with comedy. All right? right. As a comedian, yeah. you write jokes. Don't ask your friend or ask your your sister. I mean, you can ask they will friends, say, they will say no, 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 no. Your family. They say, oh, it's funny, it's funny. And you go and to the stage. Oh say. God. <laughs> If I ask your enemies, enemies who don't like you, say my brother, how far is I it? I think be real, reach out to people <laughs> and then figure out what it is that you like to do. And if, for instance, if you like doing music and you're like, oh, I don't know how to sing, but maybe you know how to write right. or maybe you like beats and you can produce. So I think start from somewhere, find people that you emulate and don't give up. It's going to be hard, but you have to try it. You have to do it. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get yourself motivated? Uh, to me, I get motivated through life. When, to be honest, I know it's going to sound really cliche, but when I'm going through like the the the, the darkest moment, when I say dark, I'm not like you know, right. like I'm about to, no, like just like moments where I'm thinking, I'm trying to analyze. Those things motivate me, and I'm, you know, I come from a home where I grew up with God, so I I I, and I like to pray, and I'm I used to be very close that where I wouldn't talk about certain things, but now I've realized I have very few close people in my life, so. I speak to them about things that I'm going through and when I get their answers or situations, those things like motivate me to keep going. And when I see little step little bits of success, that motivates you because you're like, oh okay, I'm getting that. I can keep right. going. Okay. So and so, I know what the end goal is. I see the end goal. So right. I have to just keep going and that's kind of what so that your goal, I already see the end goal. So your your goal that you set ahead of you kind of motivates you yes. to achieve it. Because which, I haven't which reached is, it which yet. is good. Yeah. Which is good. Alright, so I'm gonna ask you a question right now. Uh, okay. since you're in the music industry. Yeah. Between Tupac and Biggie, oh what do gosh. you think? What do you think was oh, a bigger legend that, to you? But that's not even a hard question for me because I grew up listening to Tupac. Okay. I like Tupac, so it's not that one was better than the other. Right. It's just that I felt more like, connected. Yeah, the one you feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. Yeah. I mean, they, he has some cool songs, but I really connected. <laughs> yeah. All right, first time on I stage. Gonna ask me like, Sonia Dia and then. Nah, <laughs> you, you, I mean you. <laughs> You know some idea. Do you know Obey? Yeah, you're yeah, at the age of nine. My parents, <laughs> I, I think we had an Obey record. So. Oh, you have to. And every yeah, Nigerian home, home. Like, most so Nigerian homes, yeah. just from the Yoruba, you have to have Obey exactly. and the Beniza. Just from the Igbo side, you have to have, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Osita Sadebe and all of that, you I know. See. And someone like me from the Niger Delta area, we have, you know, the Vito Y4 and the rest. So, uh, and I actually grew up in uh, country music. I don't know how my woman and dad. You told me that. Told you. I grew up in country music. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's amazing. Uh, yeah, my dad. I don't know. That's grew amazing. up in the country music and uh, uh, camera and uh, calypso, Ooh. and my cousin. My dad seems to like my cousin and calypso, but mostly uh, country music. The cool living, you know, African parents when they're back. I from think country music is like very relax- soulful. Yeah. yeah. So, so the cool living story. when it's relaxing, you know, when he's drinking his pine wine. Oh, then. Yeah. <laughs> That's we what you can ask him for anything. Yeah. Right? Like I said, you, yeah. You have to be very calculative if yeah. you have to ask your, your African father for something. Yeah. Among all of us in the house, yeah. I'm the one who know the trick. My <laughs> younger brother will always go and ask my dad when he's just coming back from somewhere. That's the wrong time to ask him. Or you ask him when he's about to eat. Don't. Let him finish that food. Don't. Yeah. But for me, I will wait. They will come and ask when he's just coming in. Yeah. No, no, we'll talk about it later. Can I catch you some? Just come, come back in. Huh? Huh? Don't respect. Then when he's eating, yeah. me and my younger brother will go say, Can't you see I'm eating? I'm eating Let yeah. me finish eating. But for me, I will just wait for him to finish eating. Yeah. As soon as our son sees my dad do something like this. Like relaxing. Yes. Relaxing and I uh, put his toothpick in his ah. mouth. I say, yes, you don't enter. <laughs> I will just say, dad, I found out. <laughs> say, you, you. I think that works with you. women to men too. Right. That's right. Uh, you know what to ask for money? No, no, it doesn't have to be money. <laughs> it just, you have to know when to like. You know, right. Exactly. So I mean timing is right. Yeah, time, timing, timing is right. Timing is very right. right. Alright. What was your first time on a professional stage and how, how was it? How was your experience? Ooh. Like I've had to be honest, I had my first time on a professional stage mm-hmm. was in a choir group setting that okay. was in Nigeria. I was really young there. We had a choir thing. But for me personally, mm-hmm. would be in Los Angeles during our graduation. Um I performed at the 
theatre at the graduation, it had like 1,500 people. Stanley Clark was there and it was amazing. And you know, I was with my band there in LA and that was like my first, I would say proper, like me, my right. NYOA doing her thing. Yeah. Right, and how was it? I was amazing. Yeah, it because you know, you, yeah. I was remember, doing original remember when, I, when I played your song in the assembly ground in school? Oh so my God. <laughs> you well, already? but it's, it's taking a while because before that big stage, I've been doing small little cafes in Los Angeles, but that was like a big first professional, professional one. stage with uh, lights, sure stage, people. I'm sure you're Apparently we did, yeah. 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 <laughs>